In the previous video, I showed you how to make the arch bridges and create the fallen part with Boolean modifier. In this video, we'll be finally assembling our scene with all the assets we've made previously. Hi, my name is Ken Liang and welcome to how to make a Dark Souls boss room. Before I begin, let me quickly do a recap of all the assets that we've made so far. Please make sure that they are organized into collections like this, and also that their skills are correct in relation to each other. One important thing to note is that the shelf collection should be nested inside the pedestal collection. Next, I want to show you a different blend file where I store all the downloaded scan models. There's a good reason to separate them from the props blend file, because scan models are very high res objects. Storing multiple objects like these can rake up the file size by a lot. Imagine saving multiple iterations of the blend file every time you make a major adjustment to the props. If these were stored together in the same blend file, you'd end up with multiple 300 plus megabyte files. Anyways, if you haven't downloaded this, the links are in the video descriptions. I've also done some reorganizing in the main scene while I'm not recording. I've renamed all the important objects and created collections for the cutters, lights, and arch bridges. First of all, let's link the pedestal collection into the scene and delete the cube that we use for the blocking. Linking items from other blend files means that you are importing those items into the scene, but you cannot edit them. Any modifications to linked objects can be made from their original blend files, and they will be automatically updated into the linked scenes whenever you reload them. Next, let's link in the individual shelf collection and move it along the y-axis to where it should be. Then move it up to the second floor, duplicate and rotate it from the world's origin so that they are next to each other and repeat until you have filled the second floor with the shelves. Remember that we only need to fill in the spaces where they are visible from the camera's view. Link in the taller shelf and do the same to fill up the ground floor. Make sure to take a little bit of time to organize your linked assets into collections. For the balcony, we need to append it instead of linking because we need to make modifications to it in this scene. Add a circle curve, scale it up and move it up to the second floor. No need to apply the scale values for the curve. Select the balcony and add the curve modifier, then pick that circle. You will see that it is now deformed along the curve. Add an array modifier and exchange its order with the curve modifier. Then increase the array count to extend the balcony. Adjust the balcony's translation to move it up. Or in and out of the circle.
link in the candle stand and leave it in the middle first. Please ignore me for placing it there. Then link in the prison cage and move it to wherever you like. I'll follow back the placement I made in the reference artwork. As for the chandelier, please position them to where your chandelier's light were positioned. Don't forget the single candle too. We'll use it to create small groups of candles to place them around the scene. You can create a few variations of candles in the props blend file and link them in too, to add variety. Let's move on to the downloaded scan models. Link in the arch and pillar. Resize them if you need to. Move the pillar to underneath the balcony here and scale it down until the top is just supporting the balcony. Rotate the arch slightly and position it behind the pillar so that you can see half of the pillar in front. Then duplicate the pillar and rotate it around the world origin so that it is at the other end of the arch. Now duplicate the arch and do the same until it forms the adjacent part of the arch. Select all four of these objects and create a collection for them. Now we can use these collections instances to fill up the scene more quickly. Make another collection to house all of these instances. Let's bring in the monks now and position them in your scene however you like. You can also duplicate them to fill up the scene, but I'll keep them as is for this tutorial just to keep things simple. I almost forgot about the two pillars in the foreground. Duplicate the existing pillar and separate it out from the collection. Then move it to match the position of the blocking cylinders. The size of the pillar is off in my scene, so I have to cheat by scaling it up to match the size of the ones that we use for the blocking. Delete the blocking cylinders once you've replaced them with the scan pillars. And that's all for this part of the tutorial. By linking collections of heavy objects into our scene, our blend file will retain a small file size whenever we save new iterations in the future. Now that we have everything in place, I will go over with the lighting once again in the next part. Thank you for watching, save your file, and I'll see you in the next video.